That was an eventful trip to the market. Uh, I guess people are getting desperate. I don't know what they were fighting about. I was just buying pasta because that is the only thing I can afford. <laughs> the reason why I can only afford pasta is because there's no way to get money into this country. <laughs> my biggest concern right now is finding water and charging my phone. I think I would also sell a kidney for air conditioning though. I'm melting. During my travels to places like Syria and Iraq, I had heard stories of what it was like to live in a city under siege. The endless sounds of gunshots and bombing. There was a sight of people fleeing, walking for kilometers and kilometers in the hope of finding safety. People were waiting in line for bread because food was becoming scarce and expensive. Even if you could afford fuel, good luck finding it. The things we take for granted, like garbage collection, water, electricity, become luxuries. What would you do in this situation? How would you survive? We're trying to hitchhike, but not so many people are stopping now. But one person did and they got us, I think, a kilometer farther. But down here, there's a lot less sounds of gunshots, so that's nice. We were heading to a part of the city where water and power still existed. We hoped, anyway. We found others traveling for the same reason. Water? Yes. You don't have water at your place? We traveled over eight kilometers south of my Airbnb. People stopped and helped us even if we didn't have any money. We made it to a house here where there is power and there's water. And as you can probably hear, it's much quieter. There is no sounds of fighting. It's, it's good, it's good. I'm feeling good. <laughs> so you might be wondering, how did we find a random house? We actually walked to a mosque and wanted to charge things inside, but they have no place for women to sit. And so the Imam invited us to his place. And now his wife is sitting over there and she's giving me a siba and juice. And they're so, so nice. We are charging our phones now. Thank God. What was that? Oh, there was just a bomb blast. It sounded so close by. Imam let us stay at his place here last night and now we're going to go back to our Airbnb but first we're going to see where the bomb blast was and see what damage was done. This was bombed last night here. You can see all of the destruction inside. This area had been peaceful, as what the people had said, but actually last night, a few hours after we arrived, there was a bomb strike on an accident mock that we are standing in front of at this moment. Um, no one was killed, fortunately, but a lot of people fled this area as well, so it doesn't really seem like it's clear where there's safety and where there's not. Yeah. That house over there also has damage from the bomb last night. Hello, tell me who you are and how you ended up here in Khartoum. Okay, uh, my name is Mumi, so I'm Chadian nationality. So I came here just to see the country, so I end up in this world. So uh, by this time, I think everything like borders were closed, going back to my country, so I stuck mm -hmm. up here. So I don't know what's going to be next. Like I'm just here, I don't know what's going to be next. How have the last few days been? Has it been calm? No, it's terrible. So you can hear the gunshot many places here. Mm. So you have no plan of how to get out of here? Actually, I have no plan. I'm just waiting maybe for a few weeks. If the world resolves, then I can move or I can go back to my country. Hello. It's Mark. And that is Mac. Mohammed. Hi, Dakar. You, hi, you are bit. Hi. Hi, you are bit. Uh, and that happened. That you would bit. Hi. So what happened? 
The boy described how all the pots and pans and things on the walls fell when the explosion happened, and how he was very scared and trying to hide. Next week. We're back in our apartment now and we met an Indian family who gave us this water. Um, it's so heavy, I can't even lift it with my left arm. <laughs> we shared hotspot and some extra battery power with our neighbors when we returned. In order to survive something like this, we all had to depend on each other.